Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. A privilege to be here gathered inside and outside. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Go ahead and thank him. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of fellowship. Thank him for the miracle service. Thank him because indeed you will never be the same. Not after tonight. Ask him to give you an extraordinary encounter tonight. An extraordinary encounter by the power of his spirit. Visit me, O oh God. Turn my life around. Give me a change of story. Let there be a tangible evidence that I encountered your grace tonight. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for the privilege to not only be alive, but to be able to witness another miracle service. And Lord, we thank you for Zaria. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your faithfulness over our lives. Lord, we pray that tonight indeed would be an extraordinary encounter. We allow for your spirit unrestrained access in this place tonight. May your word prevail over us and let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Welcome to a miracle service for the month of April. I sincerely want to honor and appreciate everyone. Thank you for making this time. The Lord bless you. Yesterday we had the privilege of honoring our fathers. I'm seeing um, Pastor Abubakar. Let's honor him. Thank you so much, sir. A joy. And I also spotted Dr. Anointed. The Lord bless you. We sincerely appreciate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, um, I intend for us to work with time so that we can finish so we'll be very fast um, just to perform a few functions we'll be dedicating um, a few of our children we'll just quickly do a baby dedication right now and then we'll go to the teaching of the word while that is happening let me encourage you please if for any reason you are yet to write your prayer request inside outside all of the overflows and those following online you can use now until the time we make the call. Please do so, um, so that when it's time to submit the request, that shouldn't be the times that we're starting. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Right, so we have, by the privilege of God's grace, are you celebrating God for the increase that he's bringing to the house? In the name of Jesus Christ. So very quickly, please, when I call on the families, let's save time. Unfortunately, because of our time, 
they will not be singing, dancing. Walk straight to the altar and let's get straight to the business of the night so that we can do a few other things. Um, the family of Shadrach, Ako, Omale. Let's celebrate them. Are you thanking the Lord for what he's done? The family of Sunday, Raphael. Sunday, Raphael. And Prisca Sunday. The family of Oluwasami Bonire. Oluwasami Bonire. And his wife, Omolola. You're welcome. Let's celebrate them. Is this the best you can do for them? The Bible says to rejoice with them that rejoice. The families of Ibrahim Danjuma Daniel. Ibrahim Danjuma Daniel. Celebrate them as they come. Finally, I have here the family of Charles Ada and his dear wife, Princess. Keep clapping till they arrive here. Charles Ada, Ibrahim Danjuma, Olua Sami Bonire, Sunday Raphael, and Shadrach Ako. Let's celebrate them. This is the Lord's doing, and we thank God for the blessings upon this, our precious people. Hallelujah. The miracle of the word of God. Let me tell you the truth. Every time you see God bless families with children, rejoice with them. By the privilege of what I do, I've had the honor to pray for families that up until now, some of them are trusting God. They will give anything for the gift of children. As much as we trivialize this, there are people who have almost committed suicide because of the inability to have children. They've done anything you can think about from a medical standpoint, travel across the globe from pillar to post. But it seems like that blessing has not manifested. So for some of them, as soon as they got married, the Lord blessed them with this miracle. Don't you trivialize it. It is the hand of God. One more time, all glory be to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I will always remind us why do we dedicate children not just children but why do we dedicate any and everything that we find valuable number one dedication is an acknowledgement of the faithfulness and the mercy of God are we together yes we have learned here and God has shown us mercy enough to know that without the assistance and the help of God Almighty no man has the power by himself to do anything it is only marvelous in our eyes if it is the lord's doing praise the name of the lord so when we dedicate these children we are coming to say lord we thank you for this gift these children represent the future of this ministry the future of what we are doing no matter how long we stay one day if christ tarries we are going years ago um i then i was in area e I was counseling and I would never forget this story. A woman met me and she brought in her daughter. True story, 20 year old lady. What was wrong with this lady? She started having all kinds of demonic manifestations in her life. Now, before the woman got born again, true story, as at the time she got born again, or as at the time she got married, she was not yet a sound Christian, still with tradition and all of that. And they tried and tried to have a child when it seemed <clears throat> impossible. They took them somewhere. One thing led to the other. They found themselves at a river. Are we still together? And the person they saw, the herbalist now, what we like call him, the spiritualist, told them that they would do something for them with the water. And the woman will take in. But the condition was that when this child becomes 20 years on the dot, they must return that child there to do something and the woman, according to what she told me, she said she looked at the herbalist and said, but you are an old man. Probably by that time you will be dead. Here's where I was going. They pointed one little boy who was running around there. They said, if I'm not there, this boy will be there. So as the boy was running around and playing around that shrine, he did not know that sooner or later he will be the one there. You are a failure until your succession is accurate. 
Hallelujah. No matter what you know and no matter what you can do, the glory of the church is what reveals the excellency of the finished work of Christ. If the church failed, we will be safe to say Christ failed. You are as successful as the success of who comes after you. Are we together? So when we celebrate the gift of children, we are saying, Lord, we thank you for giving us the privilege to have a future. When Pharaoh, Moses was negotiating the exodus of God's people, Pharaoh said, men, you can go, but we will leave the children and the women. And Moses said, no way. You are trying to say we don't have a future. We should celebrate now and not have a future. He said, we are going. Hallelujah. Number two, dedication is an official handover service. That means the parents will say we are only stewards of these children. We do not have the intelligence, the relationships, nor the, the sufficiency to be able to raise these children to reflect Jesus. Even among the disciples that were selected by Jesus, one was a devil himself. So, no matter how you train a child, except God shows you mercy, you can be Jesus and still train Judas. So, when parents come to dedicate their children, what they are saying is, Lord, we look up to you. You are the only one who has the power to turn this baby into a leader, this baby into a blessing. Every ambroba in the society was once like these children. Nobody was born an adult. Something translated them from these innocent babies we are seeing today. Some of them to become a nuisance to society. Hallelujah. Yes. It is an act of humility to stand before Jesus Christ. Number one, acknowledging him for this blessing. And number two, saying, Lord, all that it would take. Remember what I, the prayer that I led you to pray yesterday? Uh, was it um, here or in the school of ministry now? I don't even know which one again. Give us this day, he says, our daily bread. Your daily bread is not food. Your daily bread is whatever you need to be effective. For some of you, your daily bread can mean money. Some of you, your daily bread is a job. Some of you, your daily bread is peace among the couple. Whatever it would take to grant peace and efficiency, give it to us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I salute you, my dear people. The Lord bless you. The ladies, I salute you more. I salute men, but I salute the ladies more. Let's celebrate our ladies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I want you to stretch your hands towards them as the body you don't have to kneel please stand stretch your hands towards these children and pray the way you will pray for your own children please pray let it be from the depth of your heart is someone praying lord we thank you we thank you for the gift and the blessing of these precious ones please pray from the depth of your heart Pray and ask that they will grow to become like princes and princesses in the palace. In the name of Jesus, we will not give birth for trouble. We have no covenant with a future of disaster. Is someone praying? In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for these precious gifts that you have given this family. All these families represented. Protect them. Preserve them. Someone is praying, protect them, preserve them. Father and mother came out together. So father and mother together will raise the children. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying now? It's not just a widow that will raise this child or a widower. Lord, since they came out together to hand these children over to you. In the name of Jesus, together they will raise these children. There will be no double standards of parenting. The parents are both believers. The children will serve the God of their parents. You are praying from the depth of your heart. We release the blessing of the church, the blessing of this house. Lord, let these children be greater than us. In the name of Jesus. Greater in fire, greater in achievement, greater in wisdom. Pray one final prayer. Lord, these parents will not bury their children. In the name of Jesus Christ grant them the gift and the privilege of long life in the name of jesus christ long life prosperous life visionary life 
an impactful life. Hallelujah. And for some of them, let's pray. Lord, these children at the first, they will not be the only. As many as they desire, grant it unto them. These children only come as the first or whatever number they occupy in the line of children, but may they not be the only ones. In the name of Jesus Christ, God can add to men. He added to the church. He can add to a family. For in Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now, very quickly, I'm going to read out their names as we do now. Yes, we'll just, um, when I mention their name, let's know which of the child. And then when we are done, I will just speak officially to dedicate them. And then we'll just present their certificates. Praise the name of the Lord. The first year that we have, you are going to help me, parents, if I can't call the name to save time. This is Amy. Amy. Ojo. All right, so you heard the father. Nobody pronounces it better than the father. So this is Amy Ugane Ojo. Is that true? Did I get that right? It means God's light. Oh, God's light. Let's celebrate her. That's the first we have here. The second that we have here is Dasha. Dasha. Sunday. Okay, so Dasha, this is Dasha. What is this with ladies, ladies, ladies? Gentlemen. When you, you are going to mix it in the name of Jesus Christ. Dasha. So we have Dasha here. The third we have is Dunamis. Yes, go ahead, Father. Finish up. Dunamis Oluwa Dunsin. Dunamis Oluwa Dunsin. Bonire. Let's celebrate Dunamis. Hallelujah. The fourth that I have here is Deborah Ibrahim. Celebrate Deborah. Deborah was a warrior in the Bible. Deborah Ibrahim, the little one, she's sleeping. Hallelujah. And finally, we have Grace Enne Charles. Where is Grace? Grace Enne Charles. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, agree with me now as I pray. By the power that raised Christ from the dead and the privilege of the priestly and prophetic grace i decree and declare that our daughter here grace and charles we dedicate you in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit we decree and declare indeed that you will be a woman of valor and a woman of excellence in the name of jesus you will grow to become a sign and a wonder we bless you everything connected to ancestry everything connected to foundations we separate you away from it in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that you have been grafted into Christ by reason of coming from a Christian family, and it remains so. In the name of Jesus, that when you get to the age of discretion, you will hand over your entire life and destiny to Jesus. May it be so, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Deborah Ibrahim, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I dedicate you. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are unto Jesus and Jesus alone. The fullness of your days you will fulfill in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that you will succeed early in life. May you never do anything twice to succeed. You will do it once and you will go ahead. In the name of Jesus, indeed for your generation, may you be a Deborah. The hand of God is mighty upon you. The resources to raise you as a responsible child we release by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. We dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dunamis, Oluwa Dunsin, in the name of Jesus Christ, we dedicate you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that you will excel and even surpass your parents. You will serve the God of your father and your mother all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus, the spirit that lifts an individual above his contemporaries, may that grace rest upon you. You remain a leader everywhere you go. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Because of you, you will attract every good thing to this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you, the Lord increase you. For in Jesus' name, I pray. What's I thought someone was helping me here. Dasha now. Dasha, we dedicate you in the name of the Father, 
Are you still helping me? In the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. We decree and declare you brought joy to this family when you came. You will bring joy as you remain. In the name of Jesus. You will never bring joy and sorrow at the same time. In the name of Jesus. You have chosen joy. You will remain a baby bringing joy. You will grow to become a teenager bringing joy. Even an adult that brings joy. In the name of Jesus. You will never attract pain to your parents. In the name of Jesus Christ. That when you get to the age of discretion. The same way your parents handed their lives and their destinies to Jesus, so shall it be for you. In the name of Jesus, you are a proper child. Everything that makes for a proper child rests upon your life. Therefore, we dedicate you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Look, he's standing here and he's not even doing anything. Praise God. I mean... We dedicate you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. We decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will serve the God of your father and your mother all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus, we separate you from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. They will not find you. Nothing will cut short your life. Everything connected to ancestry, everything connected to wicked foundations, we declare you are separated from it. You will serve the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be a mighty vessel in the hands of God. The Lord will use you to bring healing to nations. In the name of Jesus, we therefore dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Congratulations. Let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, I want to quickly present the um, certificate. Hallelujah. And um, what will happen is I will shake the fathers or I will shake whoever is not holding the child. Then both of you can hold it for your snapshot. Let's, let's do that very fast. I would have invited our fathers to help us, but for time, let me just do it myself. Praise the name of the Lord. So the first that I have here, this is to certify that Emmy Omale, who was born on 15 September 2021, was dedicated to God on this day, Friday 29th, 2022, in the presence of her father, Shadrach Ako Omale, and the mother, Praise Olua Kemi Omale. Let's celebrate them. This is to certify that Dasha Sunday, who was born on 22nd November 2021, is dedicated to God on this day, Friday, 29th April 2022, in the presence of her father, Sunday Raphael, and the mother, Sunday Prisca. The Lord bless you. Congratulations. Hallelujah. This is to certify that Dunamis Oluwadunsin Bonire, who was born on the 9th of February 2022, was dedicated unto God on Friday, 29th April 2022, in the presence of his father, Oluwa Sami Bonire, and Omolola Bonire. Congratulations to you both. Hallelujah. This is to certify that Deborah Ibrahim, who was born on the 16th February 2022, was dedicated to God on Friday, 29th April 2022, in the presence of her father Ibrahim Danjuma Daniel and the mother Olabisi Suliat Ibrahim. Congratulations. And finally, this is to certify that Grace N.A. Charles, who was born on the 6th of March, 2022, 
was dedicated unto God today, Friday, 29th April, in the presence of her father, Charles Ada, and the mother, Princess Charles. Congratulations. Let's celebrate them. Thank you so much. The way you clap, that's how men will celebrate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. It is important to know who you were dedicated to. Hallelujah. There are people who were dedicated to trees, others to plants others to animals, others to rivers. And it is important, if it is not Jesus, the son of the living God you were dedicated to, don't say, I am an adult. You may not come like this for you to give you a certificate, but you can go before the Lord and say, Father, my innocent father and my innocent mother did the best they knew to do. They handed me over to a deity to take care of me. But now with spiritual intelligence, I know that no man is able to take care of me. Therefore, as an adult, I use the power of my will and in consistency with scripture, I dissociate myself from anything that is not of the Christ. Hallelujah. So that you don't have all these spirits appearing to you and saying, I hope you know who I am. No, no stranger should come around your life. If it's an encounter with the Lord Jesus, yes. Angels from heaven, yes. Not a spirit who appears and bullies you. There are many people's destinies that are under siege because of things they were handed over to. We thank God tonight is a miracle service. You must be delivered. In Jesus' name. Have you been blessed? So let's teach a bit and then we'll pray. Why is teaching important before the ministry of power as we know it? Because the teaching of the word of God provides the basis for us to place our faith in Jesus. Acts chapter 8, when you read verse 5. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. The Bible says Philip went down to the city of Samaria. The first thing he did was to preach. He preached Christ unto them. Verse 6, the Bible says the people with one accord gave heed. So that is your own part of the deal. The assignment of Philip, the man of God, is to preach Christ. Much more before the demonstration of power and any of these things. Christ must be exalted and it is based on the teachings of the truth of Christ that his power flows. But your own assignment is to give heed. The Bible says with one accord, undivided attention, they gave heed unto the things that Philip spake. And as a result... They heard and they saw the miracles which he did. Hallelujah. I felt stirred in my heart as I was praying as to what I will charge our hearts with for this miracle service. And the Lord put it very strongly in my spirit that many believers do not know how to receive from God. Please lend me your undivided attention. I want to teach you within a few minutes just a charge and then we'll begin to pray. Many believers do not know how to receive from God. Receiving from God takes understanding. And if you do not know the principles that govern receiving from God, you will be surprised that you will be around the atmosphere where God is giving freely like he always does and yet never be able to receive. Are we together? How to receive. How to receive. The Bible does not just tell us that God is a giver. God gives. He that did not spare his son, the Bible says, but offered him freely. The Bible says, how much more with him will he give us all things freely to enjoy? So we know from scripture that God is a giver. Please say God is a giver. In fact, God's idea of fatherhood is not having children. God's idea of fatherhood is the ease with which you give. He says, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more will your heavenly father give? One synoptic account says the Holy Spirit. Another says good things. It is important. Fathers give. And God is our heavenly father. That means he's a giver. 
But it's one thing to give and it's another thing to know how to receive. Hallelujah. Now, the first law of receiving, let me teach you very quickly, say charge. The first law of receiving is you must believe according to Hebrews 11 and verse 6 that God exists in the first place. If you do not believe in God, then you do not even believe in the presence of the one who gives you what to receive. The Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must come believing that he is. That means he exists. And that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is. is a powerful revelation. God is. I know you know God is in heaven. But do you know he's in your midst? You must believe that God is. It's true that you believe he's seated at the throne in some place somewhere. But do you believe that he's in your midst? You are here Turning lives around I worship you I worship you You are not worshiping he who is far You are here Mending broken hearts I worship you I worship you. So when you come to the Lord, the first law of receiving is you must know and you must believe that God is here. Jacob woke up and said, surely the Lord is in, was in this place and I knew not. It's one thing for God to be in a place, but it's another thing for you to be conscious of divine presence. Are we together? How do we know that God is in our midst? Number one, by faith based on the integrity of his word he says where two or three are gathered in my name you don't just know that god is there because someone is shouting those are the latter proofs that god is there the primary proof that god is there the basis of your knowing that god is there is the integrity of his word not the feelings not the falling down not the miracles the miracles are support systems but the basis that god is in the midst of his people is because he has said that where two or three are gathered in his name he will be there in our midst are we together so we know for a shorty that god is in our midst because we are gathered in his name So you must believe that God exists, that he is, and that he is in your midst, ready to give, ready to bless, ready to heal, ready to deliver. Someone shout, say, God is here. God. One more time, say, God is, here. God is here. Now, but the dynamics of the manifestation of the Godhead, you have to understand. The Holy Spirit, listen carefully, the Holy Spirit is that part of the Godhead who shows up in the midst of his people in honor to the father and in honor to the son the holy spirit represents the omnipresence of the father and the son in the midst of his people so when we say god is here it is true that he's there but if you were to go to heaven now heaven you will still see the father seated on his throne are we together now the part of the godhead who represents the trinity in our midst is the holy spirit yes jesus is here as his word but the personality that is in the midst of his people, according to scripture, is the Holy Spirit. Are you learning? So it's very, very important for you to know. The first law of receiving is that you must believe that the giver that you will receive from is God Almighty and that he's in your midst. Number two, very quickly. You must recognize that God is all-powerful. Because if you do not recognize that God is all-powerful, you would doubt if he can do some things. There is nothing you cannot do. Psalm sang it beautifully here. What's that? If you have said it, then you will do it. If you have said it, Hallelujah. Have you had issues in your life and you saw so many people come to sympathize with you and you had to drive them away because you knew that they didn't have the power to help you. They were just around to console. God does not come to console. You must understand that the one who has come is all powerful. 
How do we know he's all powerful? Write this down. Matthew 28 and verse 18. Media help us please very quickly. Matthew 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power, all authority, the word is exousia, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. God is all powerful. Authority has been conferred upon the Son. So you must realize secondly that God is all powerful. That means the medical condition, that means the spiritual condition, that means the financial condition is still within the power of God to solve. You must believe this. If you do not believe that God is all powerful, then the devil will prey on your ignorance or your limited knowledge and now begin to suggest to you, do you think God can solve your unique problem? I know God can solve your neighbor's problem, but if God is aware of your problem, are you sure he will attend to you? I have good news for you. The God that you have come to encounter tonight is all powerful and he will show up as such in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Those outside, are you saying amen? In the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 62, popular scripture and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. Everybody say all power belongs. That means he was not giving. He owns it. He's not only using it. We are using the power that is not our own. We were given. God was not given power. It belongs to him. Ha, this is powerful. There is a difference between a steward and an owner. All of them can demonstrate authority. But a steward's authority is derived from his alignment to the owner. The owner can choose to collect it. But who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. He doesn't have power. He owns it. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, oh. second law of receiving is that you must know that God is not only here but he owns all power the power to heal every sickness the power to deliver brothers and sisters he also owns the power to lift Jimmy got it right I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you are the lifter of man the lifter of man one more time i will hold on through the storm and i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you are the lifter of Hear me, some of you after this miracle, they will come to check you like Jesus and say, why are you looking for him in the grave? He is risen. He was in the grave. Many people will come to your yesterday and not find you there. Because like he rose, you are risen. A new level of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. So number one, you must know and believe that God exists. He's alive. Number two, that God is all powerful and I've taught you this don't forget God was not given power he owns it we were given we can't claim ownership we are stewards and the Bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful our authority is derived it's not generated but nobody handed over power to God he owns it number three is someone learning already the third law of receiving 
is that you must come to God with your desires and your expectations. Your desires and expectations. Acts chapter 3 from verse 4 and 5. Acts chapter 3 from verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, the man had get beautiful now. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Verse 5. The Bible says, And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. He didn't expect to receive everything. But he expected to receive something. Do you know the something you are expecting to receive? Don't just randomly come and say, God bless me, touch me. That's too vague. It says, give us this day. And it describes what it should be given. Our daily bread. Are we together? You must have desires and expectations. Mark 11 and verse 24. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus is speaking now. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Many people come to God and they do not know what they desire. They don't know what, the, what they want. They just hope, God, touch me, bless me. That may look spiritual, but in a service like this, it is important that you come to God with your desire. Philippians chapter 4, please. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, be careful. The word careful, there is the word anxious. He's dealing with anxiety. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, he says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Read the remaining part, please. One to go. Let your requests be made known unto God. That's the reason why you wrote your prayer requests. An accurate representation of your desires. Are we together? You must come to God with specific and exact desires. Lord, I am trusting you to visit me in this area. Lord, I have come by faith believing that you will visit me in this area. Don't say, God, as you are looking at me like this, am I all right? That, that is a, as if you talk like that, you will receive a general blessing, encouragement, impartation, and you will go back. But there are people who will, so that you will know when he visits you. If you don't know what you are looking for, how do you know when he has visited you? So perhaps you are seated here and you have no expectation. You were just invited to come. May I charge you therefore that on account of what I'm teaching, begin to cook up faith-filled expectations. Lord, I know you will come through for me this way. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Number one, you must believe that God exists. Number two, you must believe that he is all-powerful. Number three, you must come to him with your desires and expectations. Number four, are you ready now? Receiving from God will always be by faith. Receiving from God will always be by faith. It will take faith to receive from God. What does it mean by faith? It means two things. Number one, receiving by faith means that what you are receiving must be consistent with the will of God or the word of God. Otherwise, there is no guarantee that you will have it from God. Receiving by faith, number one, means it must be in accordance to the will or the word of God. First John chapter 5 from verse 14 and 15. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, according to his will he heareth us not our according to our problems you must be sure that it is according to his will verse 15 and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask then we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him is someone learning to receive by faith means to ensure that what you are asking for is consistent with the will of God as revealed in scripture. Number two. By the way, what is the will of God? The will of God simply means that which is stated in his word for you. The will of God simply means that which is stated in his word for you. For instance, if you are trusting God to lift you financially, 
How do you know God will answer that prayer? Because it is clear from scripture that it is his desire to bless you. Are we together now? Yes. Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. The Bible says, yea. Let the Lord, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So I know that my desire to prosper is consistent with the will and the word of God. Now the devil cannot tell me I'm praying amiss. I am asking according to his will because it's in accordance to his word. Is someone learning? For someone, you came to this miracle service to learn how to pray and receive. Not just, yes, you will receive, but learning, understanding why you may be praying and shouting at the gates of heaven and nothing is happening. You may be ignoring these principles. So to receive by faith means, number one, according to the will or the word of God. Number two, this is a more important understanding now. Receiving by faith means that you are you must be prepared to fulfill the scriptural demands connected to the promise desired you must be prepared to fulfill the scriptural demands connected to the promise desired this is the part of faith that many believers do not engage in you must be prepared to fulfill the scriptural demands that are connected to the promise desired to receive by faith does not just mean to verify whether the word of God makes provision for that. You must be prepared to understand that every promise in the Bible, every one of God's commitment has scriptural demands that commit God to you. If you are not ready to obtain grace and fulfill the scriptural demands, then it remains a wish. Are we together? In John chapter 2, just write for reference, the wedding in Cana, the first miracle the Bible records according to John's synoptic account. The Bible says they were in a feast and wine had finished. And then they went to Jesus by the advice of um, Mary. And when they met Jesus, here's what he told them. You desire results? You want this shame and reproach to live your life? I am willing to turn the water to wine. But there is a scriptural demand. Fix this, uh, fill the six pots with water. And after they had done it, next instruction, now fetch it and find your way. Go to the rulers and serve them. The Bible says, as they went, that water was now turned to wine. Most believers just say, Lord, remember you said you would do this. Lord, you said you will heal me. Lord, you said you will bless me. Lord, you said you will prosper me. But most believers do not pay attention to find out what is the scriptural demand connected to the promise desired. Listen, if this is all we do tonight, I didn't waste your time. Believe me. When a very responsible man came to Jesus in the Bible, he said, good master, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus had to make him know that, no, no, no. Issue of salvation cannot be with your strength. That was a responsible man. I know that I have a role to play in experiencing that salvation. What must I do? I can tell you that in this kingdom it's not all up to God and it's not all up to you. There is a role that God has to play, the role of performance. But your own role now is not only to believe God alone, but to be able to satisfy the scriptural, your participatory condition that releases the power of God to now get your desired result. This is the area where many believers fail. I'll give you an instance. So you are trusting the Lord to change your story. Say you are trusting God for a job or you are trusting God to lift you. Now watch this. You believe that God exists. He's a giver, including your job. You have satisfied that condition. Number two, you believe he's all powerful, that he can give you jobs. In the Bible, he saw some people idle. He said, why sittest thou idle? They say, no man employ us. He called them to get to the vineyard immediately and they had something to do. So God is able to give men jobs, for instance. Are we together? And number three, what's point number three? You must come with that desire. Your desire is to have a job, an honorable job that gives you an opportunity to take care of yourself, your parents or your family or whatever it is. Now you've done well, but the fourth area now to receive that job, it must be by faith. 
is it God's will to provide for you a job? Absolutely. Absolutely from scripture. But then what are the scriptural demands for someone who desires that dimension of God's power? Are we together now? Yes. It's important. Number one, for instance, you want a job, you must kill the spirit of laziness from your life. That is your own that is your own um, responsibility. Lord, I am willing to add value. I am willing to be valuable. So the more you invest in yourself, in learning and building yourself, you are making yourself prepared to be a blessing to whoever employs you. When Laban employed Jacob, that's the first expression of employment in the Bible. When Laban employed Jacob, Jacob was so valuable, Laban refused to let him go. Laban consulted with divination and they found out that the increase in his estate, his business, was because of the presence of one man. Have you become like that one man? Don't just say, God bless me and give me that job. I'm showing you how these things work. And then you believe in the power of the prophetic. So when a word is coming in the name of Jesus, may God grant you jobs. And you just carelessly say, Amen. This God, what is, I mean, you will be surprised. Remember, God only does what he says. He only does what he says. For tonight, there are three areas we are going to focus on. We are going to pray generally, but very quickly, there are three major areas while I prayed for this meeting, the Lord stirred in my heart. Number one, the Lord told me that there are many people that he desires to bring freedom from limitations. This is the first thing God wants to bring. You know what a limitation is? A limitation is an impedance. Something that stops you from making constructive progress. And sometimes progress at the rate that should be. Limitations. The first thing God wants to deal with. The spirits and the influences that bring limitation. And God is already speaking to someone who has faith. You have seen this spirit of limitation in your family. You've seen it with your father. You've seen it with your mother. You've seen it with sincere people, educated. They go to school and yet they are limited. Do you know what it means to be limited? To be limited does not mean to be incapacitated. It means that your full potential cannot find expression. Imagine with me, please. Look up, please. I'm supposed to walk on two, two of my feet. But imagine that one is tied. How do I walk effectively this way? You see that? That's how many people are. Imagine running the race of life on one of your feet. And then there are people running on two. There are others running on horses. And there are others God has given them a flight. You can't expect them to arrive at the same time. In the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of limitation this night. Please sit down. When it's time to pray, please don't be distracted. You didn't come to waste your time. Whether you are in here, outside. Some of you are in ministry. But it's clear that there is an embargo of limitation upon you. Limitation will shut down your voice. So that those who hear you don't hear you. You can be a man qualified. You raise other people in school. And yet they are the ones who come and feed you. It's limitation. This is the first thing God wants to deal with. Fight it. Don't say I'm from Plateau. I'm from Kaduna. I'm from Adamawa. Fight that spirit. In the name of Jesus. I may come from this territory. But I've been called out of every tribe. And every tongue. The limitations connected to ancestry. I break you free. You must challenge yourself this night. Please sit down. Can I tell you this? Now I say this respectfully speaking. I know that I'm talking to the whole world. But permit my bias especially for those of us who come from the middle belt slash not i respectfully submit to you that there is a spirit that pegs the achievement of people you'll find out that people do well they are sincere but they get to especially if you are the one who is lifting up the head of your family those horns come again and they sit upon your destiny in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, every limitation that will not let you go must go for you this night. It must go for you this night. Please sit down. Look up. 
according to Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2, you are destined to be global. But not just for the sake of marketing the flesh, for the purpose of an excelling life. Can I tell you sincerely, I have met people in my life after interacting with them for 20, 20 minutes. I almost will ask them, what are you doing where you are? What covered you that those to see you are not seeing you? I have met intelligent people. I've met young people who came with books for me and say, Apostle, I'm writing a book. Let me tell you sincerely, when I opened what they wrote, I was shocked. I said, this is not fair. This man of God should not be at this level. Can I tell you, all the people you celebrate are not the only ones there. There are other people who have fire and grace, but this spirit of limitation, they, I'm saying it again, in the name of Jesus Christ, especially for families here, where nobody has risen beyond any level, I come by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That spirit that ties you must give way this night in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I saw a gentleman last year. I went to minister somewhere and those days on campus, if you saw this gentleman, you would think by now he should have about the largest ministry on earth. Believe me, when you talk about a brother that loves God and is obedient and sincere, like Jesus would say, an Israelite in whom there is no guile, we knew him to be a respectful and disciplined, very responsible gentleman. I won't tell you where I saw him. Probably he may be following online. You see. But I'm telling you, I almost bled from my heart. I said, God, this is, how can this guy be here? I am a witness to what this gentleman did. When you talk of love for God, you talk of keeping yourself for Jesus. Oh no, come on. But these spirits again. Respectfully speaking, there are many of our loved ones. When they pass around this place, they will tell you, I was in Zaria in 1975. I was in this place. I you will see them show you pictures. They snap with T.L. Osborne. They will show you pictures. They snap with people today who are pe presidents. They will show you pictures that they were eating together. So what suddenly happened that you just mark time like this? Can I tell you, some of you, that spirit is already resting on you. You are already seeing that the only thing going forward in your life is your age. Nothing else is increasing again. Nothing else at all. There are people, let me tell you this. I know a man sincerely and I stand by God. About 15 or 16 years he spent in the U.S. And he returned back and assumed the spirit of his territory. He's still there till today. This man would talk to you. It's not like they smuggled him back home with honor and dignity. I remember praying for a man. I don't know for how many years he was doing his PhD. The, the time he used, he would do undergraduates and do masters and even be doing PhD. It's a spirit. Please, this night, I, I, I do not waste this opportunity. God has come to break this limitation. For, see, for many of us, our loved ones did not even know it was a limitation. They just accepted it because they said, How can they lie, Sharia? Everybody's like that. There are spirits that make sure you must beg. No matter how high you rise, you only eat by begging. The moment it finds somebody who seems to be the rising star to cut that person away and bring everybody back. Some of you, God allowed you to travel far and come for this miracle service tonight because you are the one that mantle of your family has rested on. You are the one who God is trusting to break this family free for God's sake from some of these limitations. Hallelujah. Look up. In Abuja, we have this one of our precious ones. One gentleman. Sir, this gentleman designed something that he designed a drone system that can solve a major part of the security problem in Nigeria here. I heard they had been talking to me about the guy. 
But then he was going to come and see me. I said, let him come. When I saw what he did, I stood there and I was looking at him. I've been trying to see how at least I can maybe connect him to the Nigerian army and then let's see how God helps him from there. Do you know how many people who have discovered things that can solve Nigeria's problems? Let me tell you, our corporate suffering is not the reflection of the weakness of everybody. I can tell you, this COVID thing you see, when COVID was there, do you know there were people who actually found the solution? Not, I don't mean um, tra uh, um, traditional like they say, stand and eat herbs like a but genuine, correct treatment. There is a spirit on the black race we must cause. Is the spirit of servitude that must keep you that you only eat by begging for some of you there is an embargo upon your families can anything good come out of nazareth in fact they even know you historically they say those from this tribe if anybody comes from this region that there was a curse upon them and don't you just say it it does not work if you don't deal with it you will be surprised Am I wasting your time? This was the first thing the Lord put in my heart for us to deal with tonight. The spirit of limitation. I know the limitations that come with my own background. And I made up my mind. I said, Lord, even if I'm the person you will use as the scapegoat to fight this, so that my siblings and everybody who comes from me never goes through this, I am willing to pay the price. Can I tell you, there are many regions you cannot rise beyond a certain door. No, no, those altars will come. I assure you that you are standing for God, doing ministry. You are standing for God, doing business. You are standing for God, excelling. Here they come. You can choose to postpone your miracle till another miracle service. Or you can insist this night and say, Lord, I came prepared my heart. Jacob, even your Jacob had that limitation in his life. Don't just think God is called the God of Jacob for nothing. The Bible says that night, Genesis 32, that Jacob held on to God and said, I will not let you go. He said, leave me for the day breaking. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. How about the man Jabez? The Bible says the mother cursed him. She did not name him. She cursed him. Jabez. Because I bore him in sorrow. And the young man just saw limitation in his life. And he became angry one day. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Hallelujah. In our regions here, where we come from, the moment you say you are a man of God, people start clapping for you and start sympathizing with you as if it's a funeral service they are conducting for you. Because based on the mindset that the territory has assumed, it looks like you are a total failure who has given up everything valuable in your life. Sorry and shame on you that you want to serve Jesus. So this is how you are going to waste your destiny, all the value you have. Is someone ready to break free? How about those who vow to lift you and by the next day you go to the same office and they can't remember what they said. They said, I said I'll promise you. No, I, I, maybe you did not hear me well. Ah, sir, you, prom you said you will help me. Can I tell you, when easy things become difficult, there is a spirit there. Don't sit down and just say it does not matter. Number two, the second thing the Lord wants to deal with very quickly is in the area of sicknesses and infirmities. You know what sicknesses and infirmities are? Let me tell you. If you do not understand the assignment of sickness and infirmity, you will not value the healing ministry. The healing ministry is not just about showing that a man of God is powerful or showing that he has an anointing. You have to understand the purpose. What is the assignment of sickness and infirmity? I will tell you. Please look up. Let me show you the theology behind sickness and healing. Now, the Bible says that man is spirit. Don't forget that that spirit is hosted in a body that is made of earth, the material of his territory. 
Are we together now? And according to the law of God, every human being is only given the privilege of one body per lifetime. How many bodies? One body per lifetime. You are not given the liberty to have multiple bodies in the same lifetime. It is one body per lifetime. And Satan knows this. And the condition for your continuity in this realm is that your spirit cannot float indefinitely in the air. It becomes illegal like demons. That spirit must be resident within a body. So when Satan knows that for as long as your spirit is connected to your body, there is a basis of serving the Lord with this your body. Remember the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It says, a body has thou prepared for me. Bodies are so important that even when Moses died, Satan came to negotiate the body. What do you think he wanted to do? He wanted to put another spirit in a body that men had honored so much so he can mislead them. And Michael said, the Lord rebuke you. Watch this. Every time Satan puts sickness, do you know what he's trying to achieve? There is a law that your body must maintain a threshold health level for your spirit to be able to live in it. The moment your body is deteriorated beyond that threshold, the spirit will have to leave. Whether it happens by accident or it happens by some plague or it happens by damaging your body. Satan knowing this, help that woman. When Satan wants to destroy your destiny and cut short your life, you know what he does? He now introduces something that starts eating up your body. Organ by organ tissue by tissue doctors talk to us they start eating up the various aspects of your body you are alive but you know that the threshold level of health that allows your spirit to remain that means if god has planned 100 years for you to serve the purposes of god it is possible to live at 35 why because the remaining years satan subtracted it in destroying your body don't just claim long life you mo that body must be vital and healthy. Some of you are seated here. You do not know that based on the sickness Satan has put, is already minus 20 years to your life. Parakatoshka dibala. Mande gratoska zige dibala. Mande kaparoski ada. I just saw like, I just saw like a, like a cloud. This is what I just saw. As I just made that statement. we are going to pray every time sickness afflicts you I want to assure you is the devil proposing death to your life I don't care what you call it high blood pressure low blood pressure headache whatever it is now watch this another assignment of death it leads me to the next point another assignment of death especially in the times that we live in Death comes, the, the devil has found out that death is one of the most, I mean a sickness is one of the most effective tool for bringing poverty upon people. Many times the attack on your body is not about your body. It's an attack on your finances. Believe me when I tell you that. No matter how blessed you are, there is a kind of sickness and disease that can land upon your life. Even if you are a multi-millionaire in six months, there are people that spend as much as 500,000 per week. Machines can diagnose conditions, not spirits. There is no machine that will tell you there is a wicked spirit that is in your body. I know a gentleman, they kept treating true story. He would stand and sometimes just get dizzy and fall down. And he went to the hospital and they said there's something that keeps depleting his blood. I think the, the blood, something that had to do, I, I don't know what condition they call it now. But the, the, you know, the quantity of blood required in his body. And he was creating a reaction that was hurting him. They transfused blood. His poor widowed mother went to borrow money. Nah, that's what the devil likes. When you start borrowing... You transfuse, that spirit comes to lick up that blood and the blood is gone again. There are people who were never in debt until somebody got sick. And before you know it, they are now in debt of 5 million, 7 million, and the person is not healed. It's not about sickness. It is a devourer eating up the future of your destiny. Are we together? Yes. 
I once prayed for someone who they brought within two months. This man began to deteriorate. They said there was something wrong with his kidneys. And then when they said, please help them. Watch this now. When he started deteriorating, they said they had to travel to India with the exchange rate now. Everything in total. They said they needed, true story, that they needed somebody to donate, um, donate his... Um, Help those outside, please. My God, God is going to be doing mighty things this night. That they needed somebody to donate his kidney. The mother wanted to donate hers. They said no. They now said, um, I think they found somebody. The person, true story, the person who would donate the kidney. I don't know how much they, they, they agreed on. It's quite a serious price. And then flying him down to India, it was. Everything in total will be between maybe 9 to 12 million. A widow who has not even built her own house. Where if she gets 12 million, is it to build a house or, or solve a problem? And it's not like it's 100% guaranteed. Listen, everything roaming around your body, don't keep quiet this night. Can I tell you this? Watch this. Every sickness comes like a pregnant woman into your body. If you allow it, it will give birth to many things. Help this woman, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't say my own is just headache. I, I, I got to know that it's headache. Don't say my own is just uh, something in my stomach. Refuse it this night. It must give you good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was, I think it was here in Zaria. Not, not, we've had that case in Abuja. But it was in a miracle service here in Zaria. When, many years ago, when I prophesied to someone, this woman, or is it, was it a gentleman, went to bed and had a dream. He saw a spirit holding a syringe. And the spirit told him, this is HIV. Injected him in the dream. He woke up in the morning and started having signs of HIV. Some of you have been introduced to things in your system from dreams and the realm of the spirit. You just know that you had a dream and spirit. Some of them dead people, familiar spirits, came to roam around your body. Help that lady, please. Hold on. Let me finish up so that we can pray. It will be a very quick walk this night. So number one, addressing the spirits that are behind limitations. Number two, sicknesses and infirmities. Listen, when we contend for long life, it's not because of the fear of death. By God's grace in life and in death, we are victorious. But you need this body to be able to fulfill the purposes of God. I told you that for believers, they do not die, they sleep. And the Bible says, they which sleep, sleep at night. If you want to come and force somebody to sleep in the day, the most productive period of his life, you must be a wicked person. Are we together? They that sleep, sleep at night. Number three. The third area that God wants to sort out tonight is the area of finances. Please don't trivialize this area. The area of finances. Now, when we talk about finances, it's a broad area because there are many principles. I've done several teachings. You can do well to listen there. But I'm concerned about spirits that frustrate your productivity. There is a prophetic dimension to wealth. When we talk about finances, we're not just talking about marketing the flesh and all of that. Let me tell you, our world runs economically. And if you are incapacitated economically, whether you like it or not, there are many needless problems in families that is finance that brought it. Demons didn't even have to do anything. Money was already representing them, causing that problem. Suspicions among couple. Sincere people who love Jesus, but this money thing comes in between. How about children who cannot go to good schools? Do you know, I remember one time, a woman, I think she came here, four children she had to choose one among the four who she can send to school and the remaining had to pay the price 
Can I tell you, most of the financial problems in our world today, especially in Africa and Nigeria, I submit to you, it's not entirely because of laziness. It's no longer a laziness issue. Because there are people who are hardworking and diligent. There are people who have gone to every seminar they have listened. But there are spirits that are determined. That having, do you know the importance of having financial supplies? I've taught you, the purpose of money is for efficiency and time redemption. If you do not have financial resources, you cannot redeem time. Please listen to me. The unit of destiny is time. And anything that takes your time has taken a portion of your destiny. The purpose of money is not just for buying houses and all of those things. Wonderful. Thank God for them. But more than them, God grants us access to the supplies of heaven as instruments of time redemption and to help you become efficient. The last time I was in Zaria, I think it was January or so, I was taken to Graceland and I had the opportunity to go around um, some of the houses that were demolished. Now, I truly feel for them. I'm sure that some of you were sadly affected. And I began to think to myself, I said, my God, some of these people, it was with their total earnings, home and abroad, that they built this. I was told people collapsed. I don't know how true it is, but I was told literally there were people who collapsed because of what happened. Some people plunged into depression. Others had high blood pressure till today. Some even left Zaria and just went back to the village. Believers, we must redefine our understanding about wealth and prosperity. Now, of course, you will always find people who is just the marketing of the flesh. Money, 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 just as if it's all about. We are not, we are talking about prosperity as a tool for time redemption and efficiency. By the privilege of God's grace, I am able to preach to you today and do what I do with integrity because among the many blessings, God has been able to show mercy in that area. Imagine that as I came now as a man of God, I'm thinking of my needs and saying, how will I fuel my car? Now, I will use the prophetic to manipulate you. If I see 10 naira in your account, even if it is the death benefit of your father, I will squeeze it out. There are many men of God who did not start the way they are now. It's poverty that turned them to become what they are. And some of you are already following that path. You may be filled with the Holy Ghost, but compromise is already waiting for you. Can I tell you, hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. There is only one reason why Israel, God's covenant people, go to Egypt. I've taught you, Genesis 42 verse 1 and 2. When there was hunger, Jacob and his sons, they were people of covenant. But because of hunger, Jacob told the sons, he said, why sit here and look at one another? I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. He said, go down theta verse 2 and buy for us so that we will eat and not die. Even a prophet will die when there is hunger. Hallelujah. How can a man not have high blood pressure when a father over three or four children no school fees every other thing is increasing except your income high blood pressure used to be sickness for people in 50s and the rest now you see young people teenagers and even early 20s they tell you that they are having high blood pressure what are they thinking about because although the young boy is 21 the load he's carrying on his head is for a generation not even just for him out of a family of 10 people only one person manages to rise up getting a job of 30,000. Let's be honest. How is he going to take care of 10 people plus the mother and the father? And then Satan now comes in with sickness. And they tell you one drug, one surgery is 300,000. And that's even because there was somebody who you knew. And that gentleman would start borrowing money. Please don't feel offended if I'm describing you. God is here to sort us out. There's this thing right now, I'm even tired of praying for a lot of young people now. There's this online, uh, this, these applications that allow you to take loan whether you have collateral or not. I cannot tell you the number of young people who are in trouble now because of that thing. I don't know how it works. It's like you, you just find it. Every day, I'm getting a text, something. I think that's how they write. So they're pursuing somebody and they're informing you to help the person to tell the person to return the money that he, he carried. 
every day i don't know whether they give them my number or i don't know how the people find my number and you see a young boy accumulated that if that he even used it for something noble please when it's time to speak over your finances receive all receive all don't sit down and say it does not matter man of god you cannot do end time ministry with just character and revelation alone believe me you need financial empowerment from jesus if you are to go from city to city and preach jesus with integrity there are places that will invite you they don't have anything it's even you that will have to help them imagine me going to a place now and squeezing the people and saying everybody imagine as you are sitting now i was telling you yesterday or at the school of ministry i'm confusing school of ministry and we had a session this morning imagine that because i'm thinking of my needs now i'm happy to come to zaria because i think i can manipulate you you have carried problems to come and i'm passing an offering basket quietly i'm saying you better drop something if not i will not prophesy to you some things is not about being good or bad it's pressure when pressure pushes you you will be surprised what you can do are we together Not too far where I live, I think last year or year before last, I think rain came and demolished one small church that they were building there. Till today, they've not been able to lift that church. Maybe some of you even attended, I don't know. I thought about it and I said, ah, look at this. Poverty is not good though. Just settle it in your mind. Poverty is not good. Whatever has convinced you that poverty is a good thing, it's not, it's not, it's a bad thing. It can impede you and waste your time. Can I tell you? Being blessed will help you to be a blessing. There are some of you, you have parents at home. You have loved ones at home. Some of them did not know the things that you know now. But right now, it is up to you to be able to find this key and say, look, I'm going to go and help my man, Baba that the remaining days they have on earth, let me give them the honor of living an honorable life before they see Jesus. Some of you, as you are seated now, you are not picking the calls of your loved ones because you know that as soon as they call you, they will first greet you and say, please, can you help me? You see that? I was told in the afternoon that the, is it association of bike people? They were so happy when they heard I was coming and those who do um, um, this yes express they were happy because people were going to come now some most of them are not christians why are they rejoicing well maybe the holy spirit is working on them and convicting them but on the other hand i can assure you most of them are outside now following this thing do you know why because among the many things they may have the privilege for their children to eat well any man who cannot cater for his family has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel and the devil knows that so he will squeeze away every opportunity and now unfortunately because of the attacks that we have been experiencing people cannot even rush and go to the farm in peace again because they don't know what can happen there you can be in the farm alone rejoicing and before you know it they don't see you again that means if we don't pray the devil is programming a very bad year for many people it may not be you it will not be you in the name of Jesus so these are the three areas we receive by faith that as we begin to pray over don't wait to fall down this night take your eyes away from falling under the anointing and pray until this thing lands on your head can I tell you the truth do you know that in the midst of this for it, I was saying it yesterday and respectfully to our fathers and, and all our people here do you know that the economy of Zaria largely runs on academics and education is that true that means that when there are students and when you know things are happening the people can get the money open their shops transport systems can have all of this every time there is a shutdown in the educational system in Zaria everybody suffers There are some of our precious lecturers now who have not been paid for only God knows how long. There are other people who have not done, you know, nothing at all. 
a few that have the privilege of sending their children to private universities or private even private schools some of our public schools now there are some of the students by the time they return back their contemporaries have gone light years ahead of them please don't tell me poverty gives God glory Are you ready to pray? When you insist and you are angry and you say, Lord, this must come to end in my life and in my family, I assure you that the God of heaven will, will arise for you. In the next two or three minutes, we are going to pray. Please, I'd like you to cry from the depth of your spirit and say, Father, visit me tonight. Visit me tonight. Visit me tonight. This cannot continue like this. Someone pray. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. This is the place where my life is changed. Do to me what you want. Wherefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow of things in heaven of things in the earth of things under the earth and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father someone pray Lord enough is enough in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Father, every spirit that stands as an embargo limiting me, limiting my family, limiting my children by the blood of the eternal covenant i command you must give way now open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray every spirit every embargo over my life over my destiny by the blood of the eternal covenant the lord rebuke you please pray please pray Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are still standing. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, please. Media help us very quickly from verse 1. Acts chapter 12. It says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Next verse. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. These were the days of the unliving bread. Verse 4. The Bible says, watch this. I want you to see a graphic picture of limitation. This was a man who was heralding the gospel. And the devil put him in prison. And not only in prison. The Bible says, 
they delivered four quaternions of soldiers to protect him and then they bound him hand and foot again limitation verse 5 he says Peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him verse 6 and when Herod would have brought him forth he said the same night like this night now he was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers of the door that kept the prison behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison watch this he smote the Peter by his side and raised him up saying arise up quickly this is where I'm going to now and his chains fell off from his hands are you ready to pray that every chain that has held my destiny every chain that has held my family in the name of Jesus because light has come from heaven I command be broken now somebody pray outside pray online pray chains of limitation chains of delay Change. Chains be broken. Be broken. In the name of Jesus, tying me down in one place, be broken. Tying your ministry down, tying your family down. Now look up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have prayed. Let me pray for you now. We have to pray. Those chains, they must be broken now. I know that we don't have enough space, but we'll still work with what we have now. I want to pray. There are, this embargo of limitation must tear down. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. As you shout that name, hear me. Anybody here who is a victim of this cause, an embargo of limitation, that fire from heaven must land upon your life. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, Three, shout Jesus. Shake the brakataba. I cause those chains. Bring them out now. In the name of Jesus. Chains. Limitations. Limiting spirits. Spirits of ancestry. Foundational spirits. Tying down the destinies of people. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. them out inside and outside I'm praying for you now in the name of Jesus the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing the right hand just the right hand of many people with chains on it this is what I'm saying father I decree and declare everyone here who should have gone further than he has gone and yet bring them out I command that chain be broken now 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 bring them out now hear me I'm going to pray for you you are going to represent your families right now because if you are free and your loved ones are not free you are still in bondage he said as for me and my house are you ready to pray ah. please bring them out i'm just seeing fire falling on people and the lord is bringing is, is a total deliverance right now i pray every family here that is under the cause of ancestry spirits of foundation covenant at the count of three, may that fire rest upon you now. One, two, 
free be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now Tying down lives, tying down destinies, tying down families. I'm seeing something leaving this lady. My dear, look at me. Tap her. No, this other one. That's right. I'm seeing an angel pouring something. Something is leaving her. Let it go now. I command it to leave you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Parashageta skote baladasha. Every altar speaking over every family here. Altars, whether in the village, Parakatabatia, altars connected to the six geopolitical regions in Nigeria. Hear me. I speak as one sent from God. Every altar that will not let you go, I command that it catches fire now. Hallelujah. Who is Godia? We don't have the time, but let's see what God can help us do. I'm hearing a name, Godia. Who is that? You are a woman, not just a young lady. Godia, who is that? Please, if, if, I, if, if the prophetic word is not for you, please don't embarrass yourself. You can just sit down there. Godia, we want to pray. Shabakatoskatibala. Brande kabarantos kati brake de leka tosiata, praka baka tos kene brende kebiya. Listen, there is someone here. Your problem started from the dream, the realm of the dream. You lay down and you saw yourself taken to an old house. It's a house you had left a long time. Paka toskiya, you had left a long time ago, and from that day when you woke up, it was failure after failure. I'm praying for you now. The power of God is coming on. I don't know who that person is. Bring them out right now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I decree and declare right from the realm of the Spirit where your problems came from. Be delivered now. 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 Sing that song for me. is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands everything that has to do with witchcraft I break it right now I break it right now I break it right now I release you from this embargo you will not die the dreams you are having and seeing dead people I cancel that dream now hallelujah hold on please I'm seeing a coffin this is what I'm seeing this is the spirit of the dead. I want to cause that spirit right now. I'm seeing coughing. This is what I'm seeing. Oh, death, where is your sting? It says. And no oh, grave, where is your victory? There are families here and individuals. The devil is trying to program death, whether by accident, by terrorism. Right now, I want to pray. The power of God will come upon them, bring them out. Father, at the count of three, as you shout that name, Jesus, every covenant with death looking for you or your loved ones it must go are you ready inside or outside father visit your people and let there be a separation between them and this spirit one two three shout jesus spirit of death let them go spirit of death let them go i curse you by the god of heaven release their families now
let me pray for all those who are out here every devil of darkness we stand as the church of the lord jesus christ and we declare that your time and your reign is up by the blood of the eternal covenant release god's people now at the count of three one two three go go out of their lives right now release their lives and their destinies never to return return everything you stole from them and everything you stole from their families in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the final prayer and we'll go to healing these are the three things i'll focus on this night the lord is showing me i'm seeing like a gate that leads you know how estates are a gate that leads to an estate and i'm seeing that gate locked we're dealing with limitations the lord wants me to open that gate now listen i know what the lord is showing me there are many of you the the passage for you to have a triumphant entry is not there because that gate is closed who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle amen who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle Some of you will be surprised at this prayer the kind of gates and doors that will open because for some of you you are so your family members are long supposed to be more than this level right now but there are gates i stand by this rod of the apostolic and prophetic and i decree and declare right now gates be open in the name of jesus help them help them bring them out gates be open in the name of Jesus. Gates, be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Open for individuals. Open for families. Open for businesses. Open for ministries. The prophet Isaiah said, your gates shall be continually open. It says they will not be shut day or night so that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. You are this King of glory, you're the Lord strong and mighty, you're the Lord mighty in battle, amen. Hallelujah. Please bring two ladies outside, we're hurrying up, we have to walk with time. I just saw light, the power of God is coming on two ladies. The Lord is saying he's bringing mighty deliverance. This is not just for them, for their families, they're in overflow one. The power of God is coming upon them right now. A mighty wind of the Spirit of God bringing deliverance for those families. Now in the next one minute, I'd like you to pray and say everywhere I should enter, I declare that I'm entering now. I'm moving forward and making progress. Everyone open your mouth and declare. Between now and May, I prophesy by the Spirit of God. By that command, I declare an exodus out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. Someone declare the door is open. I am matching it. The King of Glory, strong and mighty. Hallelujah. Now look up, please. 
Please look up. We're about to finish with this issue of limitations. But look up. Let me share with you a mystery. When it was time for Jesus to have what we call the triumphant entry, he could not enter Jerusalem on foot. And here was the instruction. He said, go to a place where the streets divide. You will see a cold where no man had ridden upon. He said, lose it. And if they ask you, tell them the master had need of it. That means for your triumphant entry, there are times you can't go alone. There are provisions that need to come. But the devil will ask you, why is this favor coming? Tell them the master had need of it. It's time for me to have a triumphant entry. And the horse that I must mount upon is a right prosperously because of truth. Are you ready to pray? Father, everything I need to make advancement and progress in my life, I receive right now by faith. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything I need. Everything I need. Someone is praying. Go to the place where the reef, where the cities, the roads divide. You will find a code that no one had ridden on. If they ask you, tell them the master had need of it. For all those in front here, I decree and declare every devil and every spirit that has oppressed you by the power that raised Christ from the dead be delivered now. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now. That wicked spirit must let you go. Must let your family members go. In the name of Jesus Christ, release them now. In the name of Jesus, you lose your hold over them. For the Bible says, he who the Son sets free, is free indeed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Is there a woman here that they call Mama Deborah? I just had that name in my spirit. Mama Deborah, I'm about to pray for the sick now. Mama Deborah, I don't know whether that's, you have a daughter called Deborah or they call you. Who is that person, please? What's your... They call you Mama Deborah. Yes, sir. Where are you from, madam? Enugu State. Enugu State. Yes, I want to pray for you. This demonic embargo that has tied you down. There, I don't know what it is that has to do with the spirit of the dead. Don't be, a, I'm not a prophet of doom. I want to pray for you and pray for your children. You don't have to kneel. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for Mama by the power that. Oh, Mommy. Can you imagine? Mommy, you, you, you actually came all the way from Abuja to Zaria here. Amazing, amazing. For those of you who followed on, on, um, on Sunday, this was a woman who was giving testimony, wearing white, all white, all the way here. I'm going to pray for you too. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that devil and that spirit, it must let you go right now. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Everything you have to do with the spirit of the dead, let it go now in the name of Jesus Christ let it go now in the name of Jesus Christ let it go now in the name of Jesus Christ and mama I pray for you I also pray for the photo you are holding you don't have to come in the name of Jesus I decree and declare the Lord is bringing deliverance to your children everywhere they are around the world in the name of Jesus the Lord is touching them now in Jesus name I pray 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 you will be surprised to see what begins to happen to your life as a result of these limitations going hallelujah some of you doors that have been closed for a very long time you will be surprised to see you will know the doors have opened because those who have not called you for years all of a sudden someone will reach you and reconnect with relationships again is this? Why is she here? Huh? Madam? You are the Mama Deborah? And yes. that's the, okay. I will still pray for you. Let's, let's just do it quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, you too. 
my dear it, by the okay let's just let's just do a general prayer i'm not saying you, you don't have to bring children whose names are deborah please understand the word let me just pray for them mama it's okay it's okay father in the name of jesus i pray for our mothers and i pray for this our wonderful children everything that does not represent god in your life by the power that raised christ from the dead i curse it now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that you must go free ah uh, this lady what my, what do you do for her uh, uh, it's my daughter you know where ma since the last week he, 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 the dream say somebody come i just saw her and i saw something just leave so I don't spend money for this for medicine. He said somebody, he said somebody go turn like a, a bed. They fly, fly, fly. You go buy them and go back since that time, since last week. This guy no fever. If you start to cough now, you cough no go stop. The guy don't spend money for this. You know what? You know what? I pray for you. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I release you right now from the influence of every spirit. I set you free by the blood of the eternal covenant. Every grip that any spirit has over you, I declare that it loses its hold over you. Be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. And every strange spirit roaming around anyone's life and anyone's body, I declare be delivered right now in the name of Jesus Christ be delivered right now in the name of Jesus let me pray for the sick very quickly I believe in the healing power of Jesus I want to pray for the sick right now If we can do that in 10 minutes um, I believe in the healing ministry and I believe in the power of Jesus to heal because of time um, ordinarily we we'll just distribute our people and have them lay hands lay their hands on all the people who are sick I want you to know that Jesus still heals he can heal you of every infirmity now we're going to do this very quickly we have just about 10 minutes to do this very quickly there are so many people across all the overflows here's what i'm going to ask you to do now um if you're trusting god for a miracle we'll just use four overflows any extra overflows we'll just ask them to join so we'll do overflow this one and then overflow um two overflow one overflow two across the road then we'll do overflow three any other extra overflow you can join overflow two or three or one as the protocol will help you um so that we'll do it fast we'll just lay hands we have to finish i'm trusting god that will not exceed nine o'clock so that we will leave it has to be a very very quick one ordinarily i would have just declared over your life but just to give that opportunity Please, all those laying hands, just touch them. Just a, a contact by the power of God. And then um, it is a means of reaching you so that you will receive the life and the power of Jesus. While that is happening, we'll be praying in the spirit. And as we're praying for the sick, now is the time to be submitting your prayer requests. For those who are following online, if you are yet to submit your prayer request. You can write down your prayer request very quickly. I'll give you a minute or two. If you are yet to pen down your request, please write it quickly because the ushers, PR, you can also join them. They'll be collecting your prayer requests and then um, we'll collate it immediately when we pray for the sick. We're going to be ministering here and then we'll be declaring over. Please make sure you stay till the end because we're going to be making prophetic declarations over Zaria, declaring the peace of God across the land so all those who are trusting god for healing right now um especially within here within the auditorium may i request that you move out and come and stand now we'll be laying hands on you overflow one please quickly to the front of your projector overflow two the same thing be careful be careful be careful you don't have to 
place there's order in the house of God, the Bible says everything should be done decently and in order. Hallelujah. Now, overflow one, you can come out to your projector stand. Overflow two, move to your, your LED screens. All other overflows, you can go to overflow three or just distribute them. We'll have some of our leaders who we'll just distribute them there. And it will be a very, very, very quick one. Once hands are laid on you, you return back. And even if you are not coming out, submit your prayer request and be in the mood of prayer. You're praying and trusting God. Um, for all the leaders and everybody, please, in the next 10 minutes from now, we must be done. No matter how long, just lay your hands and, and, and um, let's do it very fast. Just a touch while operating under a corporate anointing. So we'll do it very fast. Um, Benga, and, Benga and Abiodu will do overflow one outside. And um, Kenny, Isaac, and Promise, let's do three of you. Go to overflow three. And then um, we'll do who is, who is available again. We'll do, um, or no, what will happen is, when, who is doing overflow one? Abiodu? No, let's do Benga. I will plead with Dr. Anointed to join you, Benga, so that he can help us out. We'll do overflow one. And then Abiodu, you and um, you and Pastor Femi will do overflow three. Then Ima, please join them at overflow three then the extra overflows pastor dangana please i will request you to join just find any of the overflows that are vacant and join them and we're going to trust god for that grace even though i know that our fathers are here and they are a bit tired but i'm also going to plead with our father pastor abubakar at least to represent the fathers all of you here, he's going to be laying hands, just a touch. I want you to believe in the healing power of God so that we can finish just in the main auditorium here. We're going to pray. And as that hand comes upon you, I want you to believe. Worship team, you will help us, you will guide us. Whatever you want to sing, whoever, just worship with us. And please, everybody, make sure you are sensitive. Make sure you are praying. We'll be laying hands on you. Myself and Pastor Abubakar will be handling in here and all the other ministers. Father, we go in this corporate anointing, and in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that you will show us mercy. Just a touch and you believe by faith. In Jesus' name. Let's go, please. Ten minutes. We have exactly ten minutes to finish. Yes, please. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain 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 there is power Break every chain. Break every chain. So 
submit your prayer request please let's do that in the next one minute stretch your hands to this altar and i'd like you to begin to declare by faith the egyptians that i see today 
in the name of Jesus, I see them no more forever. Is someone praying? We're standing under the corporate anointing and declaring. Your prayer request written here is the most accurate representation of your desires. And the Bible says, what things soever ye desire, it said, when ye pray that you believe that thou receivest it, someone is praying outside. One more minute for those who are here to drop their request. Please, if you are bringing it, hurry up. Please hurry up. Those following online, here is your chance to connect by faith right now. All the overflows connect by faith. We are praying. I will bow my knees and pray. You don't have to kneel. Let me do the kneeling for you. Someone is praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Egyptians I see today, I see them no more forever. Don't be silent. Pray, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this area of concern, he must let me go now. You are taking away limitations by the power of your spirit. Restoring my body. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. By the anointing, the power that raised Christ from the dead, we decree and declare. Pray one more minute. In the name of Jesus, we declare and we declare. This request will never have to be written again. I overcame Hallelujah You won the victory Hallelujah Help me kiss me He said his feelings And oh My story is written Oh I overcame Say to the mountain, connect by faith. I overcame. Say to the problem, you came to me. Tell that statement right now. I already won. Declare and hold Please release your faith as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please shout a believing amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stand under the various graces that I here represented. And as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we lift up this request before the throne. And we declare that these Egyptians you see today, in Jesus name, may you see them no more forever. These Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. Every human agent that must partner with the Holy Spirit to grant the answers to this request, we compel them to partner with God in Jesus' name. And anyone who is in partnership with Satan that says over his dead body, for you to see God lifted, may the earth open and swallow them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I just felt stirred to do this. Just give me five more minutes and we'll be done. But um, there are some of these are people that I just felt led to pray for. I know that all of you are gra gradually finding expression, but um, Sam, Jimmy, David Dam, Jake Sinjari, K-Strings, come. Let me pray for you. Let me tell you this. The first teaching I started with is called limitation. These guys are gifted and talented people. But you see, it takes more than just trying to market yourself and trying to push. If God does not announce you, you just waste your time. For some of you, God has started giving you visibility. My counsel for you, do ministry with integrity. Exalt money exalt um, Jesus more than money, more than fame. The problem with a lot of music ministers is the moment God lifts them and they start having priority living, they forget about the Jesus that raised them and get into this mundanity of celebrity lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with honor, but let me tell you, when your honor pushes away the cross and you become the central focus, you are already dead, even if you are still in ministry. I hope you know there are two ways of leaving the throne. You can still be sitting on the throne whereas David has been anointed. Just because you are sitting on the throne does not mean you are on the throne. It is dangerous to be there and yet heaven does not see you as the person there. So my dear people, many have come before you. Others were foolish and they did not listen. They've crash landed. Others were wise and maintained this. And this is a message to everyone. When God begins to lift you, please take the time. Do not forget where you are. I don't care how far you rise make sure that you be, you supervise yourself and say but for his grace i will not be where i am now it is the assignment of those who are impressed by your life to clap for you it is your assignment to draw from the memory of your pain to say lord it was a long journey between me and you i will not throw it just for nothing are we together the higher you rise the easier it is to crash down and the greater the crash if you fall from these stairs it does not harm you but if you fall from this crane, you may not live to tell the story. The key is humility. I repeat, humility. Beware of some of these things on social media that you learn this celebrity lifestyle. Wonderful. Enjoy the blessings of God. But let me tell you, in the kingdom, our assignment is to project Jesus as we rise. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? The key is to project Jesus. I believe in every one of you. And as far as my own part is concerned, God will keep helping and will keep giving them visibility. And I know that there are others coming. You are there who we'll announce your ministry too with time. But let me tell you, please support their ministry and what they represent. Don't invite them and just give them transport money. If you are not ready, listen to their albums. If you are in, in, inviting them, please do well to honor them. Don't make it easy for them to be tempted. Some of these people, as God is lifting them, and be careful. Don't bring any mentality of classmate and say we used to know ourselves. When God honors somebody and you know, respect the person for that. Because we do this a lot. When you know people, when they are rising, even when God has helped them, you will still want to demean them and downplay them again. You don't have to do that. But gentlemen, I know that God is lifting you. Keep loving Jesus. So value your secret place more than ministration. When invitations become greater than your secret place, you will die eventually. This is a message for everyone. The higher you rise, the more you learn to close, deafen your ears. There is a healthy reception of the applause of men. But Satan can join men and clap so loud that you will not hear the voice of God again until you crash land. You will not die. In the name of Jesus. We agree as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that God will open you up. It will grant you access to the nations. Find favor. May this grace that lifts men lift you. Receive songs from heaven. You will not be lazy by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you not be lazy. Your families will not suffer. In the name of Jesus. And let me tell you. Any mundane ministerial association tempting you to join them for your destruction will separate you from them. Because I respectfully tell you, there are many people who are supposedly gospel ministers who are not Christians. 
I'm not condemning, I'm just telling you the truth. Are we together? The pursuit for money, the pursuit for fame, who is better than who, who sang more than who, you can't serve Jesus that way. That applies to preachers too. If you're a preacher here, this competitive mindset, who preach more than who, who is anointed, that is not your assignment. Your assignment is to preach Jesus crucified. As he lifts you, as he grants you the privilege to rise, you open up your heart and serve him. Because there are some of you who are being, you are opening yourself for all kinds of demonic mentorships. Your little prayer group, your little this, and you are fighting everybody except you. Some of you will come to church and because of the little revelation, you can't listen to any man of God again. He's preaching, you are editing what he's saying. This man, mm -mm, mm -mm. if you think the man, if you can't learn revelation from the man, learn character. If you can't learn character, learn administration. If there is nothing to learn, learn endurance. Hallelujah. So let me encourage you, any revelation that makes you dishonor, especially a senior man of God, a father who has gone ahead of you because you think you are knowing more, be careful, oh, that is the devil deceiving you. Many have followed that path and crash landed in shame. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I gave our fathers an opportunity to speak over our lives. If you are not here yesterday, go and get the teaching and listen to it from the depth of your heart. But for these people, whether in Zaria here or wherever, please honor them. Please honor them when you see them. Honor them as touching what God has given them. If you are inviting them to come and minister, please do well. Don't take them for granted. We, at, as little as you can, even if it is to package something, you know, honoring. A number of them here are family people. They will not carry your, your greetings and take it to their wives and their families. Are we together? In the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to encourage our people too so that they don't start jumping to go into secular, whatever it is. So when the church, as for me, I will keep encouraging you as best as I can. And I know there are some of you who are saying, Apostle, have you not seen me? Don't worry, Jesus is seeing you. What I'm saying applies to you too. Do ministry with integrity and rise. Going around announcing yourself and say, I am there is the recipe for disaster. Don't forget that the people you want to invite you also know Jesus. If he does not speak to them, they will never invite you. And then the more God begins to open doors, the more the expectations are higher. It means you have to trust God and write songs. Writing one song per year, you'll be ready for empty pews. Because it is both ministry and an industry. You must know how to thrive in both. Are we together? Both ministry, instrumentalists, you too. Learn what you can learn. Don't be lazy and sit back and say, it doesn't matter, I'm better than this person. No, challenge yourself. This applies to those of you in business too. Oh, apostle, I can cook. Who is eating your food? Until kings patronize you, don't rest. Keep rising. Are we together? Yes. Oh, I'm making zobo, I'm making puff puff, I'm making chin chin, congratulations. But have you gotten to a level where kings will be proud to call you? The Bible says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. May kings look for you in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands in one minute. Thank you for your patience. Let's pray for this, my dear people. Lord, help them. Lord, help them. They have songs to write. They have dimensions of grace to go to. You have taken off some of them to the nations. You are beginning to give them visibility. Lord, the spirit of rebellion, let it be out of them. The spirit of arrogance, pride, carnality, let it be out of them. Grant them the grace to fear you seriously. The spirit of laziness and complacency, let it be out of them in the name of Jesus. May your songs become the anthem of revival across nations. And in the name of Jesus, every blessing that comes with service, honor, wealth, riches, may God grant it unto you. Let all those who are connected to you be proud of you. And for those of you who are in the cave of Adulam, God is training you. The endurance to stay there. Don't graduate yourself and expect your world to know you. Paul, a man approved of God, not approved of yourself. You can respect yourself, but you don't honor yourself. Honor is conferred upon you by another. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, you will notice when I'm not around, um, Benga, Isaac, and Pastor Femi, they have been the ones here doing a marvelous job. Please come, let me pray for them. Three of you, that God will increase them 
and help them. The work, listen, the work of the ministry cannot be done in the strength of the flesh. Some of you, you are older than them. Some of them, you know them. They are not perfect. They are humans. Are we together? That every time any of them or anybody at all, we have a leaders meeting tomorrow and we are, we are already working at building other leaders. You see, the, the greatest joy of a leader is not to be a superstar. Is that God helps you to raise other people too. Are we together now? These people have been diligent. They have served. They shuttle between Abuja and um, Zaria, risking themselves on the road. It is a sacrifice. They deserve your honor in whatever capacity. Whether it's to sow into their lives, pray for them especially and encourage them. Don't make this work difficult for them. And some of you who is only apostle that you listen to, you are hypocrites. If you only listen or come for koinonia when I'm here, that means you don't believe in Jesus Christ. Because listen, the message is greater than every messenger, including what makes us great is the message we carry, not just who we are. Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands in one minute and pray for these dear people. Lord, help them. Lord, help them. Help them. Pray for Isaac. Pray for Benga. Pray for Femi. There are many other leaders too that serve in various capacities. Lord, help them. Help them. Grant them grace. They will do ministry with integrity. Take away pride. Take away competition. Take away vain glory from them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. Take away seditions. Party spirits. I am for this. I am for that. Lord, that they will serve you in righteousness. They will serve you in truth. May they be men of the altar, men of prayer, men of fire, men of grace. That the work of the Lord in Zaria will not die in the name of Jesus. And that through their watch, God will raise other people too. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God himself shift them to new levels. I impart grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The honor that God has given me, let it work for you. The results that God has given, let it work for you. The grace upon our fathers here, even as we have received by the privilege of grace, let it work for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that everything in your hand grows. You will not die on the road. You will not die in the air. No kidnapper will pick you up. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God raise people to support you. They will stand by you. The things others are looking for, God will give to you. And anybody that fights you goes down instantly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hear me, we're wrapping up. Tomorrow I leave, but let me encourage you. Let there be unity. There are many of you here that are men of God. There are three things do not allow to happen to you. Number one, believing you are the only one God is using. Already that is an attack. If you ever get to a point where you believe, Joshua Selman, you are the only one God is using. You are already in deception. You must embrace the corporate ministry of the body. I taught you this yesterday. Number two, respect and honor for elders and fathers. It is true that spiritually speaking, we are at different levels, but you have seen me honor the fathers here in secret and in open. It's not something that I pretend to do. No, 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 no. no. God sees my heart and they know that I honor them. No matter where I rise to, no matter what I become, I honor them with all my heart. I had the honor of meeting uh, my director and principal then in the seminary. When I saw him, I got down on my knees and I honored him. I blessed him with a seed and according to him, he was almost in tears. He said in his entire life, nobody had ever blessed him like this. And I told him that no matter what we become today, it is your training. Is they say no matter how high an Iroko tree or whatever it is, it can never, what there's a saying or one, one kind of thing that has to do with an Iroko tree. No matter how you rise and you grow, somebody nourished you to grow. Are we together? Because some of you are already dishonoring, especially our fathers. I've spoken to you about CGC. 11 years getting to 12 years, they have helped us to serve Jesus. It is from this place that through their influence, God and us. If God is putting a program, even if you will not attend, God can put something in your heart and say, please come and sow. This is our contribution. Are we together? There are people who have helped the body of Christ in this city that are deserving of honor. Dr. Anointed is here. He and Dr. Tende. You may not know many of you before you came to Zaria. 
God use these people, especially Reverend Tende. He is behind the rising of so many people, right from Rema to Oasis to Father's Delight. Everybody you see that God has helped. You may not exactly agree with everything doctrinary. It is too small a reason to dishonor anyone. You see our fathers here in church. Don't go to church and see a man doing what he's doing and say, what is this one saying? Reject that spirit. Keep growing as much as God has granted you grace. But please, when it has to do with honor, honor them. Honor these fathers. Honor our mothers. If you honor the father and leave the mothers, you are hypocrites. Are we together now? You see me greet and honor our mothers. They are deserving of your honor. You see them carrying something on their head, even in the market. If you can collect it, collect it. Don't say I'm too big. I'm a... This is what a lot of people do. That's why they don't last. Are we together? God grants you grace to sow into their lives, sow into their lives. So also the heads of department. We have leaders meeting tomorrow, so I will not uh, go into that. Please honor them. Don't say I am old. It's not, if it's by age, some of us will not be here. You see. But it is by the election of grace. And I can tell you, I have learned humility from our fathers here. I used to think that I was a humble person till I met every one of these fathers. I tell you, in spite of their pedigree and their achievements, they have humbled themselves and I love them from the depth of my heart. And what you will not do for me, please don't do for these people. Are we together? Those of you who have prayer groups, evangelistic outreaches take this message of honor back to your people because some of them are boiling with prayer fire and already they are going to enter hellfire with the way they are behaving don't criticize them but tell them my friend in addition to this don't criticize them because when people are rising allow them to make mistakes too people make mistakes and grow don't overly flog out on people that is is still i tell fathers this is better for your sons to fail in your presence let you see them in your lifetime and you can correct them than the one that you are long gone and then your work suffers because of the carelessness of ill preparedness so many of you that god has granted grace in your own regard please be patient with those who they will make mistakes but help them but in helping them let them know that a balanced christianity is a lasting one don't exaggerate prayer against the word don't exaggerate the word against prayer don't exaggerate the quest for prosperity against the passion for God. And don't neglect all this in your bid to seek God. There is a balanced, this is what we represent. Pray for the church in Zaria. You hear that a group is putting a little program, provided it is Jesus they are serving. In your little way, even if you can't attend, you can contribute something. And beware of those who cause division among the body of Christ. We don't need this at this time again. Are we together? In one minute, let's pray for the church in Zaria as we wrap up. Go ahead and pray. Wherever you are, Father, we pray. It doesn't matter the denomination. It doesn't matter the differences that we have from a doctrinal standpoint. It doesn't matter the imperfections and the limitations. Lord, help your body to grow and mature. And we cry, oh God. Those outside, are you praying? Those online. Pray for all the fathers of faith in the land. Lord, help them. May they be men and women of character, integrity. May they love Jesus. Pray for all the groups. Pray for yourself. Lord, let me be a contributor to the growth of the body of Christ. Pray for Koinonia. That Koinonia Zaria will remain a beacon of light, shining and blazing the light of Jesus. And like we did yesterday, let's pray one more time for Zaria. Lord, the spirit of bloodshed, terrorism, I hear that there was a, a bit of uprising in the town earlier today. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare the sound of war and bloodshed will not be heard in our borders. Are you agreeing in the name of Jesus Christ that Zaria will remain a, a, a habitable place? Muslims and Christians will coexist together in love. And any spirit that wants to bring division, we cast it away in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, for in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray now everybody please whilst you are standing if you can I'm going to speak over your life all workers please remember that we have a very early morning meeting all workers please it is compulsory 7 a.m. on the dot right here at CGC we'll just have an hour or two time of housekeeping appraisal and impartation 
before I depart. So please do well. All workers, be sure to be here. By this announcement, after the grace, please um, let there be minimal scene of people so that everybody can go home and rest for tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. But there are people here right now. Some of you came from far. Some of you came from near. Overflow 1, Overflow 2, Overflow 3, the extension down to second equa you are saying apostle i believe in jesus but right now i have backslidden spiritually and i need restoration because of the absence of maybe heightened spiritual activities in zaria something has happened to me i need restoration or you are here you are saying apostle i've been around the things of church but i have never truly made this decision from the depth of my heart we have one minute for you Wherever you are, you are in the, in the main auditorium, overflow one and overflow two. Make your way to the front here and come and stand before me quickly. Shepherd of my soul, keep coming. I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me, I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Two, are you coming? Let's celebrate them as they come. Young and old, come. It's time to give Jesus everything. You can sit back there, but let me tell you the truth. If you know that if the trumpet sounds this night, you are not going to heaven, make your way to the front. It's time to make it right with Jesus. Whether you are rededicating your life to Jesus or you are starting afresh, you don't have to kneel. Please stand so that there will be space. We have one more minute for you. Please let them in quickly. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Over, overflow three and all the other, other, other flows, all the other overflows, please move to the front of your LED screen. Young and old, please come. Male, female, Jesus is calling. Some of you are saying, Apostle, I've not done anything wrong, but I can't remember giving my life to Jesus. Join them. You are not saved. Join them in the name of Jesus. So there is something called the assurance of salvation. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now, I truly appreciate every one of you for the courage to come. Some of you are rededicating your hearts to Jesus. Some of you are making this decision for the first time. It is the noblest decision that every man can make on this side of God's kingdom. May I request, please, if you are joining them, please join them quickly. We are about to pray. Overflow 3 and all the other overflows. And those following across the globe, any nation, any continent, any territory, Jesus is calling you. He's calling you to come home. And it's time for you to win that war of your destiny. In Jesus' name. May I request all of you in front, please lift your right hand high above your head. And say this loud and clear. Jesus is here. I am only representing him. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe with my heart that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus Christ my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life i am a recipient of eternal life and from this night and forever i declare that i am a child of god i am saved i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name please keep your hands lifted father thank you these people have come there is nobody who can come to you except you draw them by your spirit lord i thank you for bringing every one of them young and old male female together i thank you because they are making this noble decision many handing their lives to you for the first time others rededicating their lives and destinies father you have declared through scripture that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Therefore, I decree and declare by the authority of Scripture that their sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I declare that you are recipients of the life of God. 
beginning from tonight you walk in the newness of life you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name i pray congratulations to every one of you um praise the lord now please let me request i'd like you to turn back um you will see a gentleman and a lady they are waving their hands please follow them accordingly they will lead you there will be a group of counselors to receive you just for a minute have your details and you'll be back koinonia let's celebrate them as they go let's celebrate them as they go dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos kete branda kata pa kotos koto pre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.